This is James Christopher, my interview with Gary Hammond. Gary was born in Box Hill, Melbourne, Australia. I met Gary on Twitter when I came across a song of his called A Secret Life. I thought it was great, so I started sharing it regularly. Gary took notice, then we started a dialogue. We've become friends over the last few years, and I shared my Wolf Boys novel with him. I still share Gary's music and promote him wherever I can. He's an excellent musician and songwriter, and I'm glad to know him. Hello, Gary. Thanks for participating in this interview project. My first question is, how old were you when you decided to make music your career? And what brought you to that choice? Oh, James, I don't ever recall actually making a decision of that sort, um, other than um, that's how it's always been. I've always wanted to be a musician. Um, and I suppose everything that I've done has really been towards that end. Um, I've been lucky I can do a few different things, like um, you know, teach and um, play and sing and do videos. So most of the time it's been stumbling around in the dark, really trying to stay relevant and... Um, and, um, and that's been how it is. Were you in a band or did you do it on your own? What were the circumstances of your life at the time? Well, I've been in lots of um, different bands and trios and duos, all sorts of things. Um, and what the circumstances were at the time of all those different acts, I honestly got no idea. I just can't remember. My music career sounds like a bit of a shambles. And that's, that's because that's basically what it's been. Um, so a lot of those acts have been um, quite successful. Um, a lot of them have just been money-making propositions, but still quite successful. But so many different ones that I, a lot of them I just can't remember anymore. Who were your earliest musical influences and why? Well, I, I played the um, piano when I was young. I learned and played a bit of guitar and, I remember my mother was a great music fan and she used to play those Rodgers and Hammerstein um, musicals like Carousel and South Pacific, which I used to absolutely love. And she used to play Andy Williams, Moon River and things like that. So I'd go to the piano and, and try and play those, those songs. And um, they were the earliest influences that I remember. There's been lots of others, of course, since, but they were the early ones in the music that I still love to this day. What was the biggest venue you've played? What other bands were there? And what was the most memorable thing that occurred? Well, the, the biggest venue we played was probably um, um, the, the casino. I played in a duo. We played at the, cause the ballroom in the casino. Um, we, we also played at a place called Carnegie Hall, different than your Carnegie Hall over there where we did a benefit concert and um, there were thousands of people there and there were, we were on the bill, there was other acts, Daddy Cool, Mondo Rock, Russell Morris, The Seekers, who were really famous Australian acts over here. And But I remember thinking, because there were so many people there who were pretty nervous going on, but I remember thinking how easier it is to play to a huge mass of people rather than, say, a hundred. I think playing to 100 or 50 is harder than playing to a huge mass of, of people. So that's the thing I remember from it is how, how easier it was. You said that you found playing the large venues were easier than playing in the smaller clubs. And I was curious about that because me personally, if I was standing in front of, you know, 50,000 people, I would find that much more intimidating than being in a small club. But since I've never done anything like that, maybe you can tell me how it's more difficult. Yeah, well, a large crowd um, tends to be noisier. They tend to be further away from you. And it becomes like a big mass of people that you can almost virtually... Um, ignore to a certain extent. Whereas a smaller crowd, like a hundred people, they tend to be closer to you. They tend to be quieter. They seem you can see the faces. They they seem to stare straight at you. Um, my experience is that's harder. 
but a big mass of people in the thousands. Australia has produced many famous bands over the years to include ACDC, In Excess, and The Divinals. What influence did any of them have on you? And how would you describe their contribution to bringing Australian music to the world? Well, I'm not sure that any of those acts particularly had any influence on me personally. Um, and there were other acts before them, the um, Little River Band and certainly the Bee Gees, I think Rick Springfield and Helen Reddy, people like that. And before that, even the Easy Beats with Friday on My Mind um, did well overseas. Um, so it's always been a thing for Australian bands to try and um, make a break or get a break overseas in America or England especially. And, um, but that can be extremely hard to do and the, the population is quite small over here so you're very quickly forgotten if you haven't got a song out. So um, it's always been a tough thing to do, try and break, break uh, overseas. You mentioned to me that your song, All You Want Is Freedom, wasn't well received. I love the song personally. Is that because the song is about immigration at a time when documented and undocumented immigration is such a volatile topic? Yeah, well, I think that's the reason, uh, James. It, um, it certainly is a volatile topic over here. Um, it was used for a, um, it was used for a, a refugee um, group who, um, um, try and help them and it was used as their theme song for a while I don't know if they're still using it or not but um, and, um, and I think maybe some people liked it and were afraid to say so or some people just don't like refugees um, I certainly have great compassion for um, refugees and um, especially the ones who are trying to get to Australia and we treat them very badly over here I think it's wrong which song was your biggest hit and what was your inspiration for writing it? Well, oddly enough, it's a song called Andy's Gone With Cattle. And um, I've always loved, um, we've got a poet over here called Henry Lawson. And um, he wrote lots of fantastic um, poetry. And one of his, his uh, pieces was Andy's Gone With Cattle. So I wrote a song, I didn't use his lyrics, but I based it on, on his um, idea and the story that he was telling and um, it was popular, it charted in the Netherlands, it charted over here in Australia, it was popular in parts of England. Um, when I listen to it now I can hear faults in the recording of it but it's still up on YouTube I think so um, yeah that would have to be the biggest one that I've had. Have you ever toured North America, Canada or the United States and if so when and what did your tour encompass? If not, do you ever plan to and would you want to? Well, I never have, but of course, absolutely I'd like to. Um, I went to America a couple of years ago with my friend Paul O'Gorman on a music sort of fact-finding mission, if you like. And we went to Nashville and we went to Music Row and we went into all the music publishing places and played them our songs. And they were great, you know, they, they liked, I was playing them a song called, two songs, Deeper and Deeper, and Have You Seen Ruby, which is songs I think they're on YouTube. And they really liked them, but of course, when you're in Nashville, you've got to have country songs, they're just, you don't even get a look in. And, um, Paul had a couple of country songs, and I, I played the only ones that I actually had at the time. So... That was a good experience. We went down to Nashville. We went to Memphis and down to New Orleans. And, um, but yeah, I'd love to go back and I'd love to tour there, of course. You've written for other artists. What was your best received song written for someone else? Who did you write it for? Or how were they introduced to the song if it wasn't written specifically for them? Well, I've had a few songs recorded by um, well-known artists over here in Australia. Um, the biggest would be uh, Russell Morris, who recorded uh, Black and Blue Heart, which is a song I wrote with uh, Paul O'Gorman. Um, we didn't write it for Russell, but um, um, Paul had a contact for him and we sent it to him. And he got back to us 
virtually the next day. He really loved it straight away. And it got to number three on the charts over here and did pretty well. And that's probably the biggest one. There's been a couple of others, but not quite as big as that one. Your music reaches across genres from country music to rock. Is this intended or do you just write what you feel? What is your writing process like? Um, well, nothing's intended, uh, James. Um, um, some people are really good at that, of, of writing to a, a specific market, but I certainly can't do it. So um, it's generally whatever happens. Uh, and, and usually I'm looking, I do the melody first, so I'm looking for a, a little bit of magic. You know, it's like digging for gold, isn't it? Just a little bit of magic in the melody and then finding an, a lyric that's appropriate to the melody. But it's, um, it's always a thrill. I, I really do love it. And my final question, are you currently working on a new album? Is there a particular theme for the album, like a concept album? Well, glad you asked, James. Um, I've got an EP coming out next week. Um, should be out by the, the 5th or the 6th of November. Um, it's been released on an AMRAP label, AMRAP. It's a government um, label over here. Um, and, well, there's no, um, there's no concept, but um, just trying to present the songs as honestly as I can. Um, there's one on there about domestic abuse, which is just um, myself playing the piano and, and just singing. So I'm, um, I'm keeping them simple and as honest as I possibly can. Um, there'll be three new videos for it, so that's coming out next week. So hopefully that'll do okay. Thanks for sharing with us, Gary. You can find more about Gary and his music at GaryLeonardHammond.com. Peace.